Canada, Justin Trudeau's um speech, Oh my goodness. Yeah. Basically the 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 lines she was one of my favorite people in the world. I miss her so and visibly kind of shedding tears, you know what I mean? It was an excellent speech. Yeah. Um I'd give it a nine out of ten. Mm. Uh, for me to give JT a 9 out of 10 for anything is <laughs> almost unheard of. Yeah. Unfortunately, he um, does this thing where he dramatically pauses when he says words, particularly breathily. <laughs> and that drives me freaking insane. Yeah. And he definitely did that a lot during this speech, which is why I'm docking him his point. But he showed up in all black, you know, he got the black tie and gave a campaign speech and yeah. he looked good and it had gravitas mm -hmm. and you know I, I, don't, I can't stand the guy but he did a good job and it was if we are somehow still going to slip into a fall campaign which I don't see happening at this point I think most of that energy is probably dissipated by this point but if that was a campaign speech it was a damn good one mm -hmm. and the fact that he was able to deliver that two days before the conservative leadership race yes. that's pretty good timing Honestly, don't you want that if you're a liberal prime minister you give a nice beautiful yeah. pro-monarchy speech two days before the conservatives pick a new leader mm. you can't really beat that let's go off on that kind of aspect of it like okay let's say this is a campaign speech effectively and they do start to launch into a campaign because weren't you saying yesterday that like this almost screws over the conservatives in a sense it does the timing yeah you know because they, they well, okay the most obvious way is the tories would have gotten all this free press new leader yes. the unnecessary leadership race is over yeah. blah 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 all that's out the window now because the cbc for the next two weeks is going to be queen 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 yes and any airtime that they would have grudgingly given the conservatives they don't have is to anymore. now they so don't have to they've the been given a free media. pass so the yeah. liberal media wins big yeah the liberals win big yes um jt gets to exploit his personal relationship with yes. her mikhail jean gets free to go on airtime. tv and yeah. tell stories about pierre polyev we got to talk about that we have to talk about that yeah shall we just get that out of the way right now we saw a clip was it ctv or city CTV, news or something yeah, CT ctv in, yeah. so mikhail jean calls in and says that pierre polyev sent a, a petition to directly to queen elizabeth to prevent mikhail jean from being governor general now mikhail jean didn't specify why this was yeah. i suspect it's because her husband was a parti quebecois guy mm -hmm. they were separatists so Pierre, especially as a Western Canadian, objected to these separatist Quebecers yeah. being appointed the representative to the Queen. Just picture him being like, Your Majesty, it is an outrage <laughs> that a separatist <laughs> would take the position of Governor General. Oh, no. <laughs> I just jerked my lapel mic. Hopefully that didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're still uh, still figuring this just out. Just in that nasally kind of Ben Shapiro, Pierre, <laughs> Paul you have yeah. tone, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know. <laughs> It's just, it's a very pure, like, I believe it. It's its crazy. It's ridiculous. Watch your cable, just yeah. FYI. But I 100% be, I believe that that, it's a very pure Paul Yev Oh, move. it sounds so pure Paul yeah, Like, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I believe it. And the queen was like, um, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, not she, going to interfere in Canadian affairs. Yes, it would be inappropriate. That's what she told Mikhail Jean, you know, so. No, that's what, well, yeah, but that's also what she told Pierre. Oh, really? She wrote back to him? I believe so. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but it's like the... I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> basically, the, the all of the publicity, the so you think, I guess, the post-leader bump, it can, if he gets any, I think it will be negligible. Because the concerns... Well, the concerns yeah. have already... If anything, the post-leader bump has come before. They've been enjoying that for like six months. Yeah, so it, either way, I don't think and that again, will affect... And again, no disrespect at all to Leslie Lewis. Yeah. Who really could come one, two, or three. Yeah. But, so, you know, and might even win the popular vote. We'll probably beat Sheree in the popular vote. Yeah, yeah. So us, you know, we're doing the thing where we're talking about Polyev as yeah. a presumptive winner. Yeah. I mean, he is the presumptive winner, but no disrespect at all to Dr. Lewis. Yeah, this is all big assumptions. And I, I recommend people go on plugging my article on Leslie Lewis can actually win. Yes, on, on pennant.inc. Pennant yes. 
Uh, I'm very proud of that piece. I highly recommend that yeah, piece. So if you're a Lewis stan, a Lewis truther, go read that. Even You'll if you're not, but you want to figure out why some people are, yes. read that piece. So yeah, no disrespect to her. If she wins this, then, you know, I'll be happy. Um, but presumptive leader Pierre, Pierre, probably definitely not getting any significant kind of post-leadership bump. Um, yeah, the coverage won't be there. So then Trudeau gets all this free coverage. He gets to go to, go to London. He gets to do the, you know, Jatem Papa kind of. Yeah, he gets whole, to talk about the 70s, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Justin Trudeau's favorite thing to do. Talk about the 70s. So use that momentum from kind of, um, kind of, um, what's the word? Draping the flag. Mm. A, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Trump hugging the flag. He gets yeah. to hug the Queen's coffin. Yep. And then use that momentum to kind of rebrand the liberal image as the true defender of the faith which is like the monarch yeah the true monarchist party and push that into like maybe a december election oh mama you know what i mean that's yeah. what i'm thinking like i'm not saying this is going to happen but if no I, was, I can see it if i, I can was see it. this yep that's what i would do just ride that wave of sympathy for the queen and mm. just not make any dumb statements because that's the thing if anything it saved them because the liberals were about to announce a bunch of different policy platforms you could say it's a setback but like i don't know all the stuff that they've been announcing recently like the lgbt2l whatever funding Spending commitments yeah 100 million dollars that's just going to go nowhere also peter yeah. wrote a great article about that check yeah. it out pennant.inc it's just all these money like it's it's not doing anything it's not addressing inflation and anything right and the only way to get people's mind off of inflation is nostalgia. So if he becomes a nostalgia act, if he becomes literally like Paul McCartney, you know what I mean, Rolling Stones, mm. Kiss kind of thing, like Dad Rock, you That's know, what he is, Justin. though. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, remember when Gord Downey died and yes. he was wearing a leather jacket? Yeah. Like, he needs to, if he becomes Dad Rock, Justin, I can't believe I'm saying this, but he could eke out another one. <laughs> That's disgusting. I know, man. I hate that. And yet that. conceivable. Yes. Disgusting yet conceivable. That and would be a great title for a, the, the book, Retrospective of the Trudeau Era. So what do the peer conservatives need to, to do then? You know what I mean? Because of, the, yeah. of apparent, like, this queen thing throws a wrench into both parties' plans because the liberals definitely had a bunch of, like, attack ads ready to go oh yeah you're right and now but they can't do that no as they much. can't unleash so it's kind of like a ceasefire it has to be a little bit of bipartisanship in yes. the morning period so what yeah. what would pierre how, how could pierre kind of game this Ooh. smartly like how would you if you were in the conservative war room what are you doing other than obviously showing my strategy well like, yeah you, you know, so in the short term you put play strong aside. defensive football. You put yeah. politics aside. You yeah. don't make any mistakes, and yeah. you just say the right things, and you know whatever. Medium term, you go back to pocketbook issues. You go yeah. back to reminding people that the country is a garbage fire, <laughs> and it's not getting any better. Yeah. So they basically the conservatives need to mobilize people with a sense of real urgency mm. that there is some like an undercurrent of national catastrophe going on that has been afflicting us for years, but particularly for two and a half years. Yeah. And I, I've said before on uh, on the site, I, I really do believe we have one more pandemic election in us. Yeah. But this time I think the narrative is going to be a little different. Yeah. And if the conservatives can ride that and ride pocketbook issues, anti-lockdown anger, um, et cetera, um, run on the charter. Yes. That you the know, Queen helped. That the Queen and PET signed. And ironically, Justin trounced. Made, he made one speech about it. Didn't he? Didn't he do the Emergencies Act? And then, like a couple weeks later, oh he was God. like, "Thank God for this charter." <laughs> he, I remember that. I, I have some sort of screenshot of Jesus, him. Jesus, like, man, that's it was, so tone deaf. It's the most shameless. Oh hearing him God. wax poetic about the charter. On like the end, the thirtieth. Yeah, 40th that's just shameful. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah, so that's what Pierre needs to handle him. Yeah, hammer him on, you know. So yeah, kind of use the Tory party, like put the Tory in Tory. Put the Tory in Tory. And so yeah, pretty much this next election will be, you know, how much can we like, you know what I mean, like, um, 
for lack of a better word, but fillet the queen's <laughs> yeah. legacy. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. You, you gotta mean? put the queen's legacy front and center, yes. and you gotta beat the freaking horse. Yes, um, that's definitely the way forward, and that is also the way that Pierre can fight Justin's queen power. Yes. TM. Yeah. Um, it's like you know, when you're playing Super Mario, and you get like those star power ups. Mm, super yeah, you're like, right. Do, 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 you're right. Do, 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 do. That's the queen. The crown. Yeah. This is JT as Mario picking up a crown. And yeah. Going, do, 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 do. yeah. Yeah. So, it's just crazy, man. Because like, it's not like we're just gonna not be talking about this queen passing like five, six, seven, eight, nine months from now. Like, it's going to be constant we're going to be bombarded the if, nostalgia tour is going to be big if you thought that you know you were overloaded with diana content from oh last year God. or a couple years ago when the last season of the crown came out and you had the princess diana musical and you had all mm. this material you know what i mean you had new books and you had you know what i mean like we were flooded with diana content you ain't seen nothing yet man it's going to be the queen all day every day for the next year <laughs> you know and every politician's going to want to get yeah they're be all like, going to want to get in on it's that it's like the whole you know you're no john kennedy movement uh, moment right you know? yeah like it's get ready for it you know what I mean? everyone will say that they you know <laughs> <laughs> this man, I have a good metaphor, but like everyone's going to be saying that they had the pleasure of sniffing the queen's. I, parts. I was going to say, see. like I'm trying to think of a word that's not jock sniffing, but I can't. It's <laughs> jock know what sniffing. You know what that's I mean? what it is. Yeah, they're every doing politician it. Politician is going to who has is in is, is a like an inch away from a microphone will be but the queen you know I mean? okay this is very unprofessional of me but yeah. live without having done any research has jagmeet singh said anything about this yeah he has interesting he gave a it was okay statement he was talking about you know something that like he mentioned diversity inclusion at least once but like it was in a tasteful kind of way okay okay you know so I mean? he wasn't like ding dong the witch is dead no no he gave a very okay. good statement um the thing is also i wanted to bring up jagmeet because he, the day before, or the day he, the, the, the queen died, I saw an, a headline, I didn't actually read the article, but I saw a headline that like Jagmeet was going to make sure that he's going to basically push the liberals on, on um, fucking dental care and um, what's the other thing he wants to do? Daycare? Not daycare. Because Trill's already doing daycare. Fuck. I mean, Paul Martin was talking about this daycare program like 15 years ago. So. Yeah, Jamie saying Trudeau. But pretty much he's going to push them on their, their agreement, you know, because they have like a power sharing agreement or whatever you want to. It's mm. a coalition that they don't want to call a coalition. But basically. It's a coalition in name only. It's yeah. a Sino. Or, or F. No, I have that backwards. But you know what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. Party will push government to act on dental care. It is a de facto coalition. Two days ago, this is September 7th, the day before the queen died, um, calls on more support for nurses in health care amid health care crisis. He says he'll use the upcoming sitting in parliament to push the liberals to move on dental care and housing. Oh, housing, yeah. It's always housing. As laid out in the deal between the two parties. So, do you think that will actually happen? And now with this whole queen mourning thing, how far, how much capital do you think Jagme will have to push. You know what I mean? Mm, that's a good point. And plus, how serious is he even in the first place? Like, like not? Yeah, because it's like, it's not like they're going to take their ball and they have nowhere to go. They have no money to fight an election, right? Like, yeah. So, but yeah, the, the political capital, if he, say he wanted to push, could he push as hard as he, he wanted to do on September 7th? <laughs> See, it's kind of up to whether or not the liberals feel like they're prepared to fight an election against Pierre Polyev. Like, yeah. that's kind of the calculus here. I think he, at least with the, with the type of announcements trio has been doing. Oh, advance. it seems like they're getting ready for it. Yeah. It's almost like the, okay, I feel like what the liberals are doing is they're campaigning against the NDP, if mm. that makes sense. Mm, yeah. Like, they're sending signals of strength, like, look, we got this. Here's JT with a black tie, yes. giving the best speech of his the, his best speech in 20 years. Literally, like, literally. Um, and, uh, you know, he's playing all the greatest hits. And what are you going to do about it, Jagmeet? Yeah. It's like regular season LeBron. <laughs> In the past couple of years, where he'll just be like fucking dropping like 40 Yeah, I'll just take game. 15 games off, whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean? 
only to like <laughs> lose in the first round <laughs> well, of the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> but like regular, where he's like going, like the past season, LeBron was like going off, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's trying to show that like he's still he's still the king. You yeah, know? yeah, I know you're right. Like he, yeah. He so. was pushing for the MVP after the, the I almost called them the Liberals, the Lakers, <laughs> <laughs> basically got eliminated from the playoffs, and LeBron's yeah. still like popping off trying to get those MVP votes. Yeah, literally, that's Justin right now. That's just yeah, he's, he's just flexing on on the NDP. Yeah, honestly. So what do you do for the NDP war room? Like, what can you? Okay, do? what would I do if I were in the NDP war room? Yeah, for starters, I'd fire everyone and start again. <laughs> I feel like that's like a recurring joke. <laughs> <laughs> and and we've actually been in the NDP war room, yeah, to be we, clear. Yeah, but that's yeah. a long story. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, realistically, I don't know. I'd, I'd sniff Justin's jock if I were in the NDP war room. Mm. Yeah. I shouldn't be doing it, but that's what I would be doing if I were in the NDP war room, because that's yeah. what people in the NDP war room these days tend to do. Yeah. So what would after that? <laughs> after, after that, the jock sniffing in the fire. I don't know. I haven't thought that far. You see, are they still paying me? <laughs> this is the the mind of a staffer right yeah. here. I'm I'm laying bare for everyone. It really is just from one crisis to the next. There's very little long term planning here. What I would do kind of ad hoc. It's try to offer some sort of alternative. Like I don't know. I guess the dental care and the housing is nice. But it's like... Is the housing nice, though? What do they actually want to do? I don't know. I really I, I have to be honest. Affordable housing is one of my pet peeves. And this is going to be super controversial because people are going to hear that and they're going to be like, what? You don't think low-income people deserve to own homes? And no, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that affordable housing programs do not actually make housing more affordable like for rent controls, people. right? They create subsidized spots for some people that yeah. then distort the market and fuck over other poor people who aren't as lucky to be as high on the list as them. And yeah. then half the time they get welfare trapped into some place that they yeah. can't even leave. And if they get a raise or something at exactly, work, now they get yeah. gouged on the rent even more. Yeah. So it's a system of imperfect solutions. I would even say bad solutions chasing a slew of different problems. So every time anybody says, oh, we need to make housing more affordable. It's like, okay, what are you going to do to increase the supply of housing while yes. decreasing the demand of housing? Yeah. Oh, you want 500,000 immigrants per year? Mm. Well, that's not decreasing the demand of housing. Yeah. How are you going to increase the supply? Because the issue is, I've said it a million times, immigration can be okay if you are building enough units to handle it. And we are this simply not. Mad Max's We're building Mad... 200,000 units for every 400,000 people that we immigrate. This is literally Maxine Bernie's platform. They call him like alt-right races for it. Yeah. And for saying something that, I, I'm hearing a lot of liberal people saying that, like on the R can, the But subreddit, it's because they have no answer. They can only reach that, into yeah. the pejorative toolbox no, and not call the racist them the, 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 I'm seeing like libs on the Oh really? The libs are saying this? Yeah. Thing. Oh my God. They're saying it's a supply issue and it's not meeting the demand of immigration now. Like the, yep. R, the Canada subreddit has been, it's low key, not, I don't know if it's full based, but like they're starting to kind of wake up and move. I don't know if it's well, being flooded by invaders who are center right or whatever, but like they're starting to wake up and realize that this whole lib globalist kind of this whole fantasy of world just, order build that yeah. battle thing is a bunch of shit. And yeah, wow. they're starting to wake up. Yeah. Well that's promising. That also explains why some polls seem to be giving Polyev like thirty nine percent right now. Yeah. It's weird the polling thing, because some polls you'll see him like, you know, like losing. Yeah, and other polls, you have these, quote, I call them suppression polls, where it's like, oh, most Canadians won't support a politician oh who, you know, spoke out in favor of the convoy. And, you know, our poll shows that, you know, Polyev is popular among hardcore conservatives, but centrist lib voters who would never vote conservative anyways won't vote for him, you know? Great. They're probably not going to so, vote for Jean Charest either because he's a dirty conservative. Yeah. It's a new kind of suppression poll every week that they've been pumping out. It's just so naked because literally I've seen the same headline copy and pasted. Popular among conservatives, unpopular among liberals. It's not true though. Like, if you see the... Anyway, I, I, the polls all disagree with each other. At the end of the day, you're believing one pollster over another. Yeah. And whatever, right? Yeah. But g genuinely, do you think the conservatives actually have any more of a chance by running a red or Tory? They've done that right twice. Now? 
They've done it a bunch well, of times before. I you're, guess you're right. Uh, Sheer, Andrew Shear is hard to say because I'd say the party were running as red Tories, yeah. but Shear was still kind of running as a conventional blue Tory. He just yeah. wasn't being that loud about it. O'Toole was like blood. O'Toole red. was like blood red. Like Dracula. yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, anyways, back to Jagmeet saying, I what I would do is, I would at least pretend, pretend like I was going to leave Trudeau. Like, at least build, drive, drive yeah. up the rhetoric enough. At the very least, the thing is, he, he fucked himself over. And my mother even mentioned this. Like, she was the NDP, because she's voted NDP in the past. Like, I have. We both worked for them, right? And with my mom, she said Jamie was just completely done with her when he supported the Emergency Act. Wow. Tommy Douglas rolling his grave, you know? Yeah. He was the one who spoke out against the OG Emergencies Act, the War Measures Act in 69, <laughs> right? And That's that such a good point. You know what I mean? And it's oh like, my God, the dude. NDP used to be the party of liberty and anti-big government. When I was growing up, the NDP was the party of civil liberties. And the Tories were the party of tough on crime. Literally, you yes. Know. Now it's the opposite, which is crazy. Well, I wouldn't call the NDP tough on crime, but certainly tough on political crime. Yes. You know, which is see. something that pains me greatly to say as a former New Democrat. They were literally like sponsored political crime. <laughs> they were all for it at one point. Jesus you know Christ, I mean? man. So, yeah. I don't know, man. It's just, it's going to be hard for him to pivot hard. But congratulations for not dancing on the Queen's grave. Because that yeah. must be a temptation when oh, you're the leader of the current iteration of 100%. the NDP. Just be like, I'm dancing on the grave of this woman on behalf of all BIPOC people. You know. Can we talk about fucking... Yeah, sure. Let's the, go into that. The Bezos kind of... Do you have the original tweet?